Hi, this is Terry with Tree Marie Soapworks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this soap. The technique is called pointy layers. Stay tuned to the end of this video and I do a little troubleshooting and give you some tips on helping this technique work better for you. Okay, let's get started. First, I use about one third to one half of my water weight in distilled water ice cubes. Then I just top off the remaining water weight with cold distilled water. Next, I carefully measure my sodium hydroxide. I add that to my water and I stir until it's dissolved. Lye is very caustic and needs to be treated properly, so if you haven't done any research on lye safety, I have a link below that you can watch a video to understand about how to treat lye. Next, I measure my sodium lactate and I use one teaspoon per pound of oils and I just set that aside with my cooling lye water. After that, I just measure my hard oils and get them melting, starting with my coconut oil and then next my sustainable no-stir palm oil. And this no-stir palm oil is from Elements Bath & Body. Next, I put these in the microwave to get them just barely melted, and meanwhile, I start to measure my liquid oils, starting with my castor oil and then my olive oil. Next, I measure my fragrance, and for this one, I'm using Abalonian C from Wholesale Supplies Plus. This fragrance is a well-behaved fragrance, and it doesn't accelerate or discolor. Next, I start to prepare my colorant, and my main colorant is from Mad Micah's, and it's called Snake Island. And I also use a activated charcoal, which is called Smooth Coconut Carbon from Elements Bath and & Body, and then my titanium dioxide. But this Snake Island is the main colorant, and it turns out more of a blue-gray than a green, and it's a really gorgeous color. It's rather unique. I used Elements Bath & Body's colorant calculator to figure out these colorants and then I just tweaked them a little bit because I wanted them to be different enough from each other that they show up against one another. I have a link to Elements Bath & Body's colorant calculator below and I also have a lot of other information about the supplies I use below. Like I've had people ask what wire cutter I'm using, that green wire cutter, that's below. And also what stick blender I use, that's also below. So just take a look at that. I also give you all the information you need to put this recipe into soap calc. All you need is the total oil weight and the percentages of your oils and then your super fat and your water percentage and you can put this recipe into soap calc. I don't list the exact recipe because I want you to learn so if you have any questions just ask. I have two videos that I've done on soap calc. One I did for Elements Bath and & Body and the other one is my video for Tree Marie Soapworks. So if you're interested, I'll leave those links below as well. I'm adding a little extra activated charcoal to my first color because I want that to be definitely darker than my second color. So you can see I added it here and then I'm going to mix up a little extra just in case I need it. I keep notes on all of my recipes and I know any adjustments that I make so I wrote down these adjustments that I did so that next time I can repeat the same color if I want or if I know that it was too dark or too light I can just change it a little bit. Now that my hard oils are melted, I add my liquid oils and I pour them down the side of my pitcher so that I don't introduce a bunch of air bubbles. Next I add my sodium lactate to my lye water and then I strain my lye water into my melted oils. Before I stick blend this, I want to find out what a fourth of it's going to be so I can split off my batter equally. So I weigh my bowl and the contents and then I subtract off the weight of the bowl and then I divide that by four and that's the number I'll use later when I'm splitting my batter. Next just stick blend until an emulsion is reached. An emulsion is reached when the batter is no longer going to separate. There's no oils floating on top. And if you pull your stick blender out of the batter and you look at the film of batter on there, it looks like an even film. If you look really close, there's nothing breaking apart. It's all sticking together. That's a good time to split your batter. If you wait until your batter has traced before you pour your batter and color it and add the fragrance, sometimes you won't have enough time to work. 
so this is a good time to split it when it's just in an emulsion because you can always speed up your batter by stick blending but you can't take it back you can't slow it down so I always just mix it to an emulsion unless I know that my fragrance is really slow moving just mix it to an emulsion color it and add the fragrance and then if you need to stick blend just stick blend Next I just add my colorants to my batter and I just adjust them as necessary. So I do need to add the black to my batter and I will need to add a little white as well. Now that I'm happy with the way that my batter looks, I'm going to add my fragrance. For this technique, you need your batter to be about at a light or a light to medium trace. And I thought I probably got it a little too thick. And as you will see when I cut my soap, that my bottom set of points were a little bit more shallow waves. And that was because of here when I'm pouring, the batter is thicker. Can you see how thick that batter was? It's fairly thick, a little too thick, I would say. But what you do is you watch your batter go down to the end of your pitcher and you start moving before it ever leaves your pitcher because a lot of times when it's thick like that, it will just create a big divot in there. So start moving before your batter leaves the end of your pitcher. And you just wanna make some moves back and forth and any of that batter that sticks through from the previous layer is what makes the points. So you can choose to cover those up right away and make small points or you can kind of pour on both sides of those and make bigger points. It depends on what you wanna do. The gaps between the newly poured batter make the points of the previously poured batter. So this layer has a lot more gaps to begin with, so that means there will be more points. To force this soap through gel, I preheated my oven to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. It's my lowest setting on my oven. And I covered my soap and I put it in the oven. And when I put it in the oven, I turned the oven off and I turned the oven light on so it stayed warm. And then before I went to bed, I just turned the oven light off and let it come to room temperature. And in the morning, I cut it. If I would have cut it that quickly in the summertime, I think I would have got soda ash, but since I cut it and it's not as humid now, it's fall time and nearly winter time, so that's why I could cut it so quickly and not end up with soda ash. Here I'm just fixing some of the holes. Now I'm just marking the soap into 10 equal divisions, and if you wonder why I slant my ruler, I have a video telling why I do that, so just check in the information below or look at my videos. I'm super excited about how this batch came out and I'm loving this colorant called Snake Island. And I think I'm gonna have to get a bigger container because I pretty much ran out on that one. <laughs> Now that I'm cutting this soap, let me tell you about what I learned. And one thing is, I think that I shouldn't have stick blended those first two layers. 
I think I should have just let the batter thicken up on its own, just not be so impatient with it, and just check it every once in a while, and then let it go, because I think that I rushed it a little bit, and it would have been much better if it was just a little less thick. I really wanted to play with this and make little kind of fingery veins that came through it, and I wanted to kind of split some of my waves, but that'll have to be for another time. One thing that I want to warn you is when you're pouring your first layer of points, so it's really your second layer, you're going to need to get your pitcher down in there. So if you have one of those funnel pitchers like I have, that works the best. But depending on how thin your batter is, it's harder to get your spout of your pitcher closer to the previous layer. Just remember you're trying not to break through that previous layer. So this method would be much more difficult in a tall and skinny mold because of how close you have to get to your previous layer and it's very tight in a tall and skinny mold to get your spout down in there. So I would say you would need a little bit thicker batter for that so it doesn't just run right out of your pitcher because of the angle you have to pour at. When you're picking your colors, make sure that your colors are different enough. I feel like the way that I did it in the design today works really well to do it a dark to light, but if you're doing different colors, make sure that the colors are not the same hue or shade. So if you're looking at mine, I did the gray and the pink, and it seems like they're awful close together, so those waves just did not stick out. And you can see on the top part, between the white and the pink, they look really good, but you can't even hardly notice them in the other layer. So just be aware of that when you're picking your colors. Let me just tell you a little bit about how I figured out this technique. I learned this technique by accident. I was making a layer soap and the layers were just taking forever to set up. So I just poured very close to the layer before and this is what I came up with. I didn't tell you earlier, but I was the guest teacher in the July soap challenge for this very technique. And if you wanna see the results, I will post a link below. There are so many design possibilities for this technique and you can do an in the pot swirl and make it look like waves or you can make it kind of veiny and fingery. Like I said, the one that won first place was just gorgeous, um, but they all were gorgeous. There were some oceany ones. And so I will leave a link and you can check those out. I'm just wondering how many of you are soap makers, so if you could comment below and just let me know how long you've been making soap. And if you are interested in soap making, let me know what's holding you back. I have a soap making Facebook group now, and if you're interested, it's for learning. It's for asking questions and troubleshooting and sharing what you've made and sharing what you've learned. And it's a group that you must ask to join under your personal Facebook account and not your business account. And also you must read the rules. There's three questions that you have to answer in order to get into the group. And if you have asked to join the group and haven't been accepted, just please finish those questions. The group is called Tree Marie Soapworks and my business page is also called that. So just make sure you're finding the group page and I have provided a link below. So just click on that or search Tree Marie Soapworks on Facebook. Thank you so much to those of you who have checked out my website and also those of you who have placed an order. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for joining me today and if you appreciate my videos, please just give me a thumbs up and a comment and share with your soap making friends. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications for when I post my next video. I have many ideas for my next video, so I could make a mini drop swirl, or it might be a tiger swirl, or a gradient soap. Also, I was thinking of another confetti soap, so I have four ideas sitting here, but I might change my mind. I have so many ideas running through my head, so just stay tuned, and thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.